Africa is the most vulnerable continent to climate change impacts under all climate scenarios above 1.5 degree Celsius. Africa, despite its low contribution to greenhouse gas emission, remain the most vulnerable continent. Oladosu Titilope Adenike is a freelance journalist and founder I lead climate and advocate for climate justice. She's joining me now live to discuss the potential future effects of global climate change. Uh, Adenike, welcome to the program. How vulnerable you think, uh, in your opinion, African continent is to the climate change? Yeah, in Africa, climate change is already a reality. It's no longer a threat because we are seeing it through cyclone, um, each wave kind of crisis that is happening currently. We are seeing climate event at the same time um, and dangerous threats that we are seeing, which is leading to harmed conflict because currently climate change is now a security threat to Africa. We are seeing it through the rise of harm group and definitely it's going to keep progressing if we don't act, if we don't do anything. And that is why we are raising our voices through different campaigns and advocacy to see how we can get political will from our leaders to see how they can tackle the climate change crisis because it all needs a joint call for us to see how we can meet towards um, our climate goals in, the, in, in solving the defining issue of our time. You started, uh, you know, climate change campaign uh, in Nigeria. So far, can you tell us more about, about this, about your campaign? Yeah, very well. Uh, when I first started, I started uh, the Fridays for Future. I initiated it in Nigeria first, just to see how young people can be part of the decision making of their tomorrow and when it comes to climate action. And gracefully, many people are now involved across African continent. And now I'm also um, leading a campaign, the Elite Climate Action, trying to bring in Pan-African problems that can, could be solved by Africans and as well needing international support to see that we're able to transit to um, clean energy sources and we're able to beat the climate change crisis because without climate finance, there is no way our climate action can be completed. So very well. Uh, my campaign so far it's how we can see how we can help the communities that are vulnerable to be able to support them through our advocacy through our campaign to draw attention for political will you know for all the needed efforts that we need to tackle the climate change crisis and so i started this advocacy right from where i graduated um from my from university and up to now, I'm still continuing the campaign because I'm seeing more young people come into this space because climate action doesn't matter the age you have, nor your qualification or who you are, because we are all on the same planet. And anything that affects us is definitely going to affect the whole population. So if climate change is not affecting you now, know definitely that your next generation might not escape from it. So it's what you do that's going to count. And that is why we see that every climate action summit really matters to see that we are winning the race against the climate change crisis. Because right now, it doesn't look like we are on the track to win the race because we are still seeing more fossil fueling, um, carb uh, carbon emissions rising and the rest. So. We really need more support. We really need to keep our campaign going. And that is why I so established that I lead climate action initiative, especially when it comes to raising ambition about the restoration of Lake Chad and a green democracy, because climate change could lead to a broken democracy. So, uh, you know, uh, thank you for that. Tell me, what are the challenges that you currently face in this campaign? Yeah, very well. Um, 
the climate justice movement is really um, comes with a whole lot of um, challenges. You know, sometimes you have to carry out climate action using your personal phone. You know, sometimes you have to sacrifice your time. You know, just to think through different solutions that come to your mind. And when it comes to writing, which does a lot, then you have to think, think before you could write. Sometimes I write article twice in a week. You know, once in a week, and it all has to do with a lot of work you put behind the scene to see that you're able to bring out quality work for people to read and for people to know where the problem lies and how to solve this the problem because i believe that if you don't know that a problem exists you can't find solution to it and that is why climate education is very important to see that we are able to educate the general public that it doesn't really matter that you have you, you are already a graduate you still need to be educated about the climate change crisis because it is not part of our curriculum it's not something we're taught so we have to educate the public for them to get the general knowledge of what is happening around us then we can all solve the problem together so very well um, there's a lot of challenges when it comes to uh, um, trying to convince people to join the movement for climate justice, trying to tell people that what is currently happening is climate change is one of the leading um, causes. So sometimes it could be really challenging to convince people of such force, but we keep moving. We are not ready to keep quiet. We are not ready to stop. And we are ready to demand for justice because justice for one is justice for all. So whatever we do now, if we're able to get climate justice, then it's going to influence over other global goals, such as um, gender equality, education, no poverty, zero hunger, food security, and the rest. Okay, so looking at the various um, you know, security challenges facing uh, the continent, and also most importantly on the uh, West African part, looking at the uh, series of uh, coup happening uh, in Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, you know, how do you think this, you know, uh, would affect your campaign and uh, also the region uh, achieving uh, the climate goal? Yeah, I think um, one of those things that climate change does is that it um, affects the capability of communities to adapt to all of these changes. And part of it is what we are seeing, that the rise of violent extremists and group that are really using the seizing the opportunity of the displaced people that have lost their livelihoods to get them to join them or to recruit them. I think um, I, I, I'm going to write it as part of my article that is tomorrow to be released precisely and accompanying it with a video on my blog at womenandcrisis.com stating the implication of the loss of life use, looking at the Lake Chad region and how the, the shrinking Lake Chad have affected or is creating impact or increasing the, um, the, the probability of um, Arm group trying to expand their boundaries beyond the Chad region because once people have lost their alternative livelihoods, what they are left with, they, they, they become vulnerable to any kind of crisis. And that is what we are experiencing. That climate change is taking another form of um, vulnerability in terms of um, making people to be recruited easily to hand group of people and that is why they keep becoming perpetrators to their various communities and that is why also it's very important that we restore our various landscape because in africa we know we can't do without um, agriculture or without our natural resources because they are very important they help to um, to employ majority of our uh, uh, of the youth of people, uh, and it also helped to also sustain our livelihood. So once it is lost, like for example, that of the Lake Chad region, whereby there are more than thirty million people, and these people depend on this lake for different livelihood options for the farmers, for the men, for the fishermen, and these people have been displaced. So it's a very big issue that we really need to look into that recharging the lake is one of those steps of or one of those things that could bridge um, peace and security in such region and could also end terrorism or, or any form of armed group that could rise in the future or presently so it's not all about using military 
or weapon or any kind. It's all about us trying to look at the situation so that we wouldn't create another bigger problem that in the, in the case of we trying to solve the problem. Oh, okay, thank you, Adenike. Uh, so recently you attended the uh, COP25 uh, um, in, uh, in the UK, uh, the United Nations uh, Climate uh, Agency and also the African Development Bank express uh, serious concern, you know, regarding how climate change, you know, will affect, you know, some countries in Africa, on the continent of Africa. So they express concern, you know, in regards to Mozambique, you know, uh, Malawi, and also uh, Ghana, you know, looking at this uh, other countries also being on the high, you know, uh, of, or, or, you know, on the high list of uh, countries that are more vulnerable to be impacted by the climate change. So what message, you know, do you have for leaders on the continent in regards to climate action? Yeah, I, I think every, uh, the climate change crisis, it, it's a global issue. And every country in Africa, specifically, has been impacted in one way or the other by the climate change crisis. Talking about Mozambique, Malawi, South Africa, in New Zimbabwe, and the rest. You know, for um, in 2019, they were impacted by cyclones on two different occasions. And now this same area is also still being impacted, you know. And that is why it is important that climate finance at this time is is very important for us to be able to transit or to uh, a cleaner energy sources because without support for us to be able to um adapt or to even build capacity it's going to make the climate change crisis to get worse because the capacity is not there the the necessary resources that we need for us to be able to transit to where it should be or how it should be it's not there so in anything that we are doing right now even even though if it needs us to switch from fossil fuel to clean our energy sources it all needs us to um get the necessary finance be able to assess the finance that it's needed for us to do all of this and that is why um the 2000 and um a nine agreement that was made should be should have gone a long way in helping African countries or vulnerable countries to be able to um, to get stronger in tackling crises like this. We shouldn't have been faced with several pandemics or cyclones or heat wave or even flood. You know, but such promise was not um, was never became a reality and that is why it's important that for every conference for every meeting for every decision we take maybe globally we should try to localize it when we come home to see that such conference is not it's not that we are just attending it but we are trying to make effort we are trying to make it a reality at cop26 in the uk there were several um there were several commitments that was done how far have we been able to go? Where are the necessary supports? Where are the uh, capacity that we need to make this a reality? You know, it's not it's not by we just mentioning commitment. It's about making it a reality. That is the time we have right now. How we those commitments that we've made in the past and in the present becomes a reality. Even the number of commitments we have so far, if we have been able to make it a reality, we would have gone further than where we are today. We would have been on the track winning the race against the climate change crisis. So this is a call for us that the time to act is now and the cost of inaction is, is far greater than the cost of acting now. And so it's very important for us to keep holding our leaders accountable, to keep campaigning, to, to keep advocating for what we think is right and we should we should, we should wait for greater results while we are trying to uh, campaign or rally around for such 